Oh, hey guys, you're here. Welcome. Welcome to another episode of the GT6. So, where are we standing here? In the last episode, we did the final repairs of the door here and the top in and out. You know, there was a little bit of a rotten area. So, we did those repairs and the door is now done. And if we want to coat this side complete, we're going to have to also install the seal permanently. However, the seal inside is not painted. I had it out so many times in and out. I could have painted it and now in this position I was going to be able to weld it. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to take it out again. So I'm going to take it out and I'm going to paint it. Then we're going to put it back. We have the position and everything it's mounted with clickers. Hopefully I'm going to be able to put it back as it is because every time I take it out, something changes. So we're going to put the door again before we weld it and everything to make sure that it is where it's supposed to be. And once the seal is done, we might make this transition piece right here because we don't have it. It shouldn't be too hard to make it. We also have this cup, end cup that I made a few weeks ago, but I don't like the shape because I think it needs to go like a straight line from here and only here somewhere it needs to curve. Anyways, we're probably going to make a new cup and uh, if we have time, we're also going to start working on this hole here that we left in the beginning so we need to complete this area so we can make a new cross member and then we can go this side down but let's see if, we, if we're gonna have time for all that in this video all right so this thing actually is uh, pretty well tarred inside because you know this is a replacement panel that they changed at some point at some somewhere it has a pretty good layer of tar which i don't need to remove and even there's a primer underneath from the aftermarket panel when it came what it came with so i just cleaned these edges here where i'm gonna do spot welds here and here and i'm gonna primer everything now and I'm gonna primer inside as well because there's some areas where there's bare metal and we're gonna be ready to install it we just need to make new cup I guess so this is the old one and this is what I mean I want it to be a little bit more square if I can say that like I don't want it to be so round here I want it to come this shape to come like this and then start making the turn down you know, because when we put this on the bulkhead, it barely covered the weld there. So there was going to be a gap here and, and it's not right. I don't like it. And I already modified this part that if you haven't seen this before, I made it and I made this cup. I'm going to put, I'm going to put the link to the video so you can see it. I made a little notch here, which is where it's going to end up there because I might need to use this in the future and basically this is the shape that I want so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clamp it and I'm gonna bend the, the flange That looks better now. It covers the seam, you know, before it wasn't covering this. Now it covers it, I just need to push it in whenever the time comes and that's it. So I'm just gonna take it out mo one more time to paint it at the back and maybe even the front because I wanna have paint inside. It's gonna burn when I do the plug welds, but anyways, now I can take it out like this. And once it dries, we're going to put it back in the same way. We're going to position, again, with all the clickers, we're going to position the seal to, to make sure that everything is still okay. We're going to put the door, gonna check the gaps again, and then we're going to start welding. And, and the cup, since it's going to be there, like that, 
I can push with something I have here. I have this opening, you know, for the transition piece. So from here, I can push hard and I can weld here. I can also run screws and pull and weld. Here I need to push so it goes to the wall and I weld. First, I want to have the seal in the right place, which should be there, but I want to reconfirm it. Okay, so it is the next day and the cap is painted and I drilled three holes here for plug welds. And now we can install it inside, just like this. I'll make these holes bigger so I can make plug welds here. Now if, it would be great if we can put seam sealer inside here, but I'm not going to be able to weld. But let me fasten the bottom and make sure that everything is where we want it. And then we can start actually welding it. All right, so it is exactly where we want it. The gap around the door is not too bad. We know that we have an issue over there that we might need to play with. We know about that over there, so we're going to adjust this later. We're going to have to make a cut on the seal and lift this front end because somehow, I don't know why this happened, uh, but it's obvious that this end of the seal is down. It's not the fender that is up. This end of the seal here is down. The rear end is where it's supposed to be. And if we're inside, let me, let me open and I'll show you. So here we have a pretty much level surface. Here we have a sloped surface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cut somewhere here and here in the front. And I'm going to raise it a little bit. But that's going to be after I finish with uh, mounting it permanently. Maybe even when we work on the bonnet, which is going to be somewhere in the next week, not now. So that's how I'm going to position the seal and I'm not going to worry about this end for now. Something else that we know about is this gap here. So I'm trying to make up my mind here whether I want to touch it or not. So in this area here, I like the gap, but here down it becomes a little bit too wide from that's where I replace the piece. I think I might just add a little bit of weld to the end to make it smaller and that's going to be it. Another thing is here, you can see it from that angle, but you can see it from this angle. You see how this panel here is too flat. The door is a little bit more round and it's not that the door is too far out. I think this is too far in and it's, that's how it came from the factory, I believe. Didn't fit well the jig or something, but it, it is not nice. So I'm going to have to address that and something else in this area here, the seal together with this piece go too far in and that I don't like. Here they overlap, but that's how these cars come. These two panels overlap, so that's fine. But here, from here to here somewhere, the seal needs to come out a little bit. Let me show you from a different angle and you're going to figure it out. You see how it comes in and then it comes out again. And the door doesn't have that shape. The door has a straight line from here to here. So it needs to be something like that, you see? Only in this area. So once everything is mounted, I think I'm going to cheat here a little bit as well. And I'm going to make a cut like here. I'm going to open it and then we're going to weld it again. Because I don't like it. And for here, the same. We're going to make a cut here. We're going to push this out and we're going to weld it again. I think there's a lot of bondo here too. So we're going to have to clean this area, see what's there. We might need to do some other work here anyways. But first of all, Let's weld the seal.
Okay, so it's all welded all over the place underneath. That was a pain in the butt. I used the rivet holes for plug welding and then I went and I added more spot welds all over the place with the spot welder. Same here on top. Did some plug welds and some spot welds. Here we only have plug welds, of course. And now the only thing that we need to do is the cup. And uh, to do that, I'm gonna use, like I said before, I'm gonna use this two by four, like I said before, <laughs> and I'm gonna push on the cup from inside and we're gonna do the plug welds. Okay, it was too tight here for me and the camera, so I welded it, I, like I said, I put that two by four inside and I pushed it out and I welded it all over the place. I'm not proud of this welding. There's that tar on the inside of the seal though, so it was burning and it wasn't easy to weld, so the welds don't look great. But we'll see after I grind them, maybe I'm gonna have to touch them up here and there. Now we can trim this part here. We can grind everything uh, here. I, I'm gonna leave it just tucked for now, but when I have better access, I'm gonna go around and weld it in full. And uh, yeah, the rest I'm just gonna grind and then we're gonna move to something else. All right, so I ground a little bit here and I trimmed the top of the flange because it doesn't need to be longer than that. Quiet, quiet. And, uh, I, and I ground a little bit here, not much. We're gonna touch it up. I'm just not in a grinding mode, you know? So, here as well. I ground just a little bit. We're gonna, I'm gonna finish this when we're working on the bulkhead at all, as, as general. But here, I'm more in a creative mode. So, cleaned up the paint, of course, a little bit. And now I started making a template. So what we're gonna make, you know, this is a flat piece with a flange coming up and a flange coming down on this side. But uh, it's not a simple piece because we have a flat side. Let's say we use a flat piece of metal and we put it there like this. Okay, it works, right? On that side, but here it opens a huge gap. So we need to bring this down a little. And if we bring it down, that opens a gap there. So it's not a straight line uh, that that end, that end is actually curved. That's how I made it, I have a curved side. And when we put the curved side towards the flange, now we have a much smaller gap here. And that's how it is. The flange of this piece, the transition piece, is gonna be wide and it's gonna come to the edge here. Okay, so this is what I came up with. That's how it goes. And if it has a flange here, it's gonna overlap nicely with this flange. However, it's a problem now how to make this flange down and this flange up because this is obviously a curved line. Can't use the brick, so we're gonna to have to bend it manually. It would be great, maybe I should, if I make a template, a metal, like a solid metal template, I can clamp the piece and just hammer the flange down. So let me see what I can do. Well, I actually forgot about this trick that my great-grandfather taught me when he was 16. He said that if you take any piece of cardboard and you shake it long enough, it turns into metal. True! There you go. So now we can use this to bend our flanges down on this side and up on this side. And then with the shrinker, we're gonna stretch this one and we're gonna shrink this one here. All right, forget about these lines. This is wrong. The pattern is underneath, so you're going to see where the real lines are. Now we're going to put this pattern on the other side and we're going to flip it and we're going to bend the other side as well just making sure that the pattern lines up with this flange 
on this side. Okay. okay. So this flange is a little bit curled but that doesn't matter because we have to stretch it anyway so we're gonna start shrinking this side and this is gonna have to be stretched anyways so we have to start shrinking this one this flange in order to get this shape so i'm gonna flip it around actually and the shrinking has to happen mostly in the center here And now this side needs to follow, so if we straighten this flange, it's going to start following anyways. So now let's start stretching here. other side again okay it's almost there let's go and test it yeah. needs a lot more you know what I'm gonna make a pattern for this shape is this what we want I think so okay so where the the bend is so where the bend is, that's where, ah, oh. so where the bend is, that's where we're going to start. So we need to make this look like this. Okay. And for the other side, it's going to be a little bit, you know, it's pretty much the same for the other side. So we have to make this side as well. So to make this look like this, we're going to need to stretch a lot more here. So up to here, we're good. So we're gonna bend here now. So you see now, we have a gap right here. And this is overlapping here, this means that we need to straighten it a little bit here. I, I overstretched it. So we need to shrink here in this area to make it straight because we have a straight line here. So maybe shrink here and stretch here more. So I'm gonna do the stretching part first and then we're gonna shrink there because I'm on the stretcher. So it's gonna become even more overlapped. So I'm gonna stretch here. And now, and now we're good all the way to here, and now we're gonna shrink here, and it's gonna come back. Okay, so this side is good, let's see it this side. and it's pretty darn close, so I would check it on the car. Okay, that's perfect. So now we're gonna cut this a little bit lower. Here we're gonna make a horizontal line, and that's it. But you know what, I'm going to drill holes here for clicos. We're going to put some clicos and then we're going to fit the door to make sure that the door still fits. And then if that is okay, we can drill holes for plug welds and weld the whole thing. Okay. Let's see how the door fits now. All right, the door is in. And 
I don't know if you can see here through the gap, but there's quite a bit of space there. Okay. So that's good. All right, so it is uh, painted, just the back of it. And, and I also painted these flanges here and everything. So once it's dry, we can start welding it. But while we're waiting to dry, I think I'm gonna start dealing with this hole here that in the beginning I just abandoned. Like I wanted to make sure that I have a continuous piece all over here so I can make the, the inner seal and the outer seal and everything. But now I wanna come back to it because we wanna finish here and make a cross member because here the cross member is long gone. It's somewhere with these parts there. <laughs> I keep all the rusty parts for now. So what we have to do is if you see here, the metal overlaps the old metal. So we, I, I just need to trim it down so it doesn't overlap. So they meet somewhere and then we bend it down until they match. We can finish this seam here all the way to somewhere here. And then here we're gonna make a square piece to cover this hole. And under there, I'm not gonna touch it for now. <laughs> yes, we're gonna fix it, but that's gonna happen from underneath. When we take the body off the frame, we can replace that piece under this part of the cross member. Also the cross member is rotten here on the side and here, but we're gonna repair this. But let's not jump ahead of ourselves. Let's finish this seam first. Okay, so I shortened this a little bit, so now let's see if we're gonna be able to bend it to go closer to this. It's more or less there, we're gonna finish it later. I accidentally pushed this metal back. It needs to come back and it's gonna close properly. We're gonna weld them together and then we can make our square piece for here and underneath it's gonna be for some other time from when we are under the car. Okay, so it's all done, nice and smooth. Of course, it's gonna need a little bit of body filler here and there. There's a dent here from, I know this was from when I clamped it. So now let's focus on this hole here. Now I uh, trimmed it here yesterday, but looks like this is also gonna need to be repaired. So I'm just gonna weld it up to here, from here to here, because that looks like a solid metal. And we're gonna leave it there, and then we're gonna make this piece for here. And we're gonna weld it this way. And then we can actually make our cross member here, maybe just tuck it on this side, but here we can weld it completely to keep our floor. And the rest we're gonna do from underneath. Also this side of the cross member is it needs some work, so I'm not sure if I want to do this now or I want to do it together with the floor from underneath. I think I'm going to do the two pieces together. So for now, let's do the floor. I don't think I'm going to be able to keep you here around because there's no room for me and the camera, but it's going to be just updates. So for now, I'm going to do this weld here and I'm gonna make this patch and I'm gonna bring you back. So I cut a piece of metal over here, but before I cut it to shape, to match the exact opening, we're gonna make those channels here. We're just gonna make them end here. They used to go all the way to the front and these are like literally water channels. So if, if water collects here, it's supposed to drain this way and then there's a 
somewhere there's a plug hole here but of course we're not gonna allow water to come inside the car right and if it comes we're gonna dry it but we're not gonna let it drain on its own <laughs> so we're just gonna make it uh, end here and here so I'm gonna mark them and I'll show you how we're gonna make them this is how we're gonna make them We're doing it slowly so that we are allowing the metal to stretch. <clears throat> Ooh, pretty well. So now I'm just gonna Trim it to shape. That was my dog. Okay, I'm just gonna trim it to shape and weld it. Union. <laughs> all right, so it's all welded. Time to grind it. There you go. Not gonna grind any more than that. That's more than enough. Um, here inside, it's hard to grind, but it is pretty good. The important part is going to be from underneath because because we want to make the car look nice underneath right if they put mirrors underneath you know <laughs> anyways let's make the let's make the channel so i went on the most motors website and this is what it looks like the cross member it's basically from here to the end it's just a square tube so I guess it's not hard to make it, right? Okay, so this is just a 3x3 three three box, apparently. And we're gonna make a small flange on the side. So I don't need to even mark anything, I'm just gonna measure it on the brick. So now we just have to trim it here, make it fit in the car, drill holes for the plug welds. Make, we need to make flanges also on one side where it goes against the inner seal. Alright, I had to trim it a little bit diagonally because now you see how it fits nicely here. But it's actually not perpendicular. I know we have to bend flanges here, but um, it looks like my seal, my inner seal is not vertical. I don't think that's how it's meant to be, but that's how it is in this car. So, so we have to make a custom cross member. So you see, if I bought one for $99, it wasn't even going to fit. So here we have to make some notches so we can bend the flanges. So now here it would be great if we had a finger brake but we don't, so we're gonna have to come up with a different solution. And if we bend this one first, okay, so the one on top, unfortunately, we're gonna have to do by hand, a little bit of the time. And now the other two should be easy. Okay, that's how we have it here. Now we only have to trim this end to match the other one. That doesn't help much, does it? <laughs> nope. 
somehow we're gonna have to project it from here to there. So we're gonna say the straight line is here and there. Let's try. Okay, so here it needs to go a little bit lower because you see from here it starts going up. So we're gonna have a, we're gonna make a notch here and we're gonna bend the flange up and that's gonna allow it to go a little bit lower. Okay. Finally, here, we're gonna raise the floor here. We're gonna put a jack underneath and we're gonna raise the floor because it is on a slope. When we're doing the plug welds, we're gonna raise the floor. On this side, actually, I don't need to do anything. It's perfect. I'm gonna weld this here and grind. Then we're gonna drill holes for plug welds and we're gonna paint inside, and we're gonna paint inside here, and we're gonna weld it. Okay, so all holes are drilled, everything is painted, it just needs to dry, and we're gonna weld it. Oh shoot, I didn't clean the paint over there. So I need to clean the paint there. In the meantime, this is gonna dry. There you go, so the cross member is installed as well. Weld it all over the place and ground it just a little bit, not all the way. Here on this side, I haven't welded it because this is gonna have to come off, like this whole entire part probably is gonna have to be repaired. But if you look this way, it looks finished, so I might just ignore it. <laughs> Way. Beautiful. <laughs> and with that, guys, we're gonna call it a video. So we're gonna end it here, and we're almost ready with this side. I mean, there's just few little things that I wanna do. Like I said, I wanna slice this here a little bit and open it, slice this a little bit and open it, and uh, also this area here, which is tricky but we have some rust here and we're going to talk about this area in the next video because some people believe some things and some people like me don't believe those things <laughs> so we're going to discuss those in the next video so anyways that's the plan for the future for today the plan is to end the video <laughs> so bear with me until i say my ending as usual which is thanks for watching commenting subscribing guys i'm not just saying it's not just words i really really appreciate what you do all your positive comments all your support on patreon and via paypal it is really really helpful for me because i really need it so that's to all these guys that are passing here so thank you guys and to those who are not patrons yet and maybe they wish to become there's a way you can go to the link in the description uh click on it that's gonna take you to the Patreon page and from there it's easy. You just select one of three ways that uh, you can support me in. But if you wish to make just one-time donation, you can do that as well by sending a PayPal transfer to elin.yakov at rustybeauties.com or you can send a new transfer if you're in Canada to that same email. And that's another way to support the channel because it is not easy to make all these videos. Honestly, it takes time and I really appreciate that now I have something in return for my time that I put on editing all these videos. But again, you don't need to support the channel financially in order to have access to everything. There's no such thing as VIP content here or early access or anything like that. Everything is available for everybody at the same time, whether they support the channel financially or not. The financial support is only 
a way for you to say thank you if you feel like it, if you think that my videos helped you and saved you money, etc, etc. So with that said, I'm going to sign off and one more time, thank you guys.